David Smith here with another flipped classroom math lesson. A few tips before we start. First, remember that you can speed up or slow down the playback if that helps you follow along. Second, you can turn the captions on and read my words on the screen. Third, you can pause the video at any time to catch up with your notes or write down questions for class. Okay, we've been playing around with this new tool, the chi-square analysis, and we're finding that it does what we need to do so that we can measure how weird something is. If it's either like a fair coin or not a fair coin or things like that. And we're gonna later, we're gonna take that and generalize that to situations involving people, not just coins and dice. So let's take a look. Um, to summarize, we came here by looking at two different ways of measuring how different something might be. One was the numeric difference, like how many heads away are we from what we would expect to flip for a coin flip. That's the numeric difference. And then we also looked at percent difference, like what percentage off is that from what we would expect. And we found out that those two tools by themselves really don't do a good job because, and this is the key point, sample size is also very important. So the numeric difference for a small sample size has a much bigger effect than a numeric difference for a very large sample size. So we're going to start by looking at numeric difference with the chi-square calculation and take a look at how that works. Okay? So two situations. I've got 25 heads in 30 flips. Okay? You could get that. And then 510 heads in 1,000 flips. And yeah, you could get that too. Okay, so let's take a look. I filled in my table and I did my chi-square calc. So observed, expected, all my numbers. Here's my chi-square calc. You've actually done this calculation already, but I'm just summarizing it here. And for this situation, our chi-square is 13.3. And you're going to come to know that's a really high chi-square. Second situation, 510 heads in 1,000 flips. Again, my table showing my observed expecteds and my chi-square calculation. And this one comes out to be actually pretty low, 0.4. Now here's the thing. The numeric difference in both of these is 10, okay? This is 10 away from what's expected, and this is also 10 away from what's expected. But intuitively, you should be able to see that this result is much more difficult to get. 25 heads and 30 flips, that's going to be pretty hard to get. It's 10 off, but much harder to get than 510 heads in 1,000 flips much easier to flip this one. So the chi-square should be lower for this one than for that one, and indeed that's true, big, low. And here's the reason, it's taking into account sample size. In this calculation here, that 10 difference is on top of a very small number. It's 10 over 15, okay? So, or 10 squared over 15. So that difference has a much bigger effect because this is our expected value on the bottom, that's half our sample size. So this shows us that we have a relatively small sample. Now if we go over to this calculation, again the tops of the fractions are the same. This is going to be 10 squared, as is that, but now the bottom is 500. So our sample size is much, much bigger. It's on the bottom of a fraction, so what it does is it makes the fraction itself smaller, and our resulting chi-square is smaller. So this shows you how sample size is accounted for in this calculation, because otherwise these two scenarios are the same amount of difference, just 10 off from what's expected. But the chi-square calc actually takes that into account and gives us a big number for the one that we'd be more suspicious of than the one that we'd be more likely to accept as fair. example that has two different scenarios with different sample sizes that have the same percent difference. In this case, it's 50%. That's a pretty high percentage. If you were to look at both these coins, you'd probably be suspicious about both of them. However, we can make our point with that even so. So our first situation, five heads in 20 flips. So that's five heads, that means 15 tails. We expected to get 10 heads, 
So the way I'm calculating percent difference is I'm just saying that's 50% less than it should have been. So that's 5 instead of 10. So that's where I get the 50%. Okay. Remember, there's a couple ways to calculate percent difference. This is one of them. As long as you stick to the same method for both scenarios, you can compare. Okay. So this one is 50% off from what we'd expect. I put in my numbers for my chi-square calculation. I get a chi-square of 5, which is actually quite high. Now let's take a look at this one here. I've got 125 heads in 500 flips. So in 500 flips, we would expect to get half heads, which would be 250 heads. We only got half of that. We got 125. So again, this is a 50% difference in this table as well. So I've filled out my table. I've done my chi-square calculation. And oh my god, this is the biggest chi-square we've seen yet in class. That's 125. Just to know, you could probably say for almost certainty, this is a rigged coin with that kind of a chi-square. You're going to come to know that. Okay, but let's stick with the point here. So, same percentage difference in both scenarios. But it's probably easy to imagine getting five heads out of 20. I mean, it's not likely, but it's pretty possible you could get that. So, this situation is a lot less suspicious than this one. Getting 125 heads in 500 flips with a fair coin is just going to be super difficult. The long-term average is going to be really close to the theoretical probability. The more flips you do, the more chances you give the whole picture to come to that long-term average. So to be at 125 when you should be at 250, that's pretty hard to do. And guess what? Our chi-square shows a nice big number, certainly much bigger than this one. Okay? So check it out. I have the same percentage difference. Okay? By using this method alone, these would be equally weird. Obviously, they're not, and the chi-square calculations takes that into account. The one that's less weird has a much lower chi-square value than the one that's quite a bit more weird. And check it out. Sample size is what causes that. I have a relatively small number at the bottom of my fraction here, so whatever goes on on top, it's only going to get divided by 10. It's a difference of, of 5 here. Okay, so bump, bump. Now, on this one, the, uh, the bottom of the fraction is 250, so much bigger number to divide into the top one. So sample size is having an effect on this equation as well. Okay, that last explanation was just a little bit incomplete, so I recorded this little bit to add in there to make it a little bit better. We were talking about sample size and the effect on the chi-square calculation. And so, really, yes, the bottom of the fraction is bigger, but a bigger bottom of a fraction makes the overall fraction smaller. But we need a bigger chi-square for this one because it's a little bit more weird. 125 out of 500, just hard to get. So here's why this ends up in such a big number. The top part also includes sample size. These are big numbers. This is going to be negative 125 squared. So we're squaring the numeric difference on the top. That makes the top grow really fast so that the whole fraction is going to grow really fast. So that was when we had our chi-square over here of 125. That's the biggest cause of getting a ginormous chi-square when you have a, a bigger difference on the top for a large sample size. Okay, let's wrap this up. So, chi-square accounts for numeric difference, and that's this little bit up here, that's right there in our calculation, that's the numeric difference. It accounts for percentage difference, which is embodied by the whole fraction. You're dividing the numeric difference by the expected value. This is kind of like a percent type calculation. So it's accounting for the percentage difference. And it also accounts for sample size. The bigger the sample size, the bigger the number on the bottom of the fraction. So together, this term, which is part of the chi-square calculation, accounts for all three of these things, which is why we say that chi-square does a pretty good job of measuring weirdness. Now that you've finished the video, take a moment and jot down some notes or questions for our next class. Remember that you can also watch the video again if you want to increase your understanding. If you enjoyed the video, please click like, and if you'd like to help me grow my YouTube channel, please click subscribe.